All right, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, how's everyone doing? Everybody doing well? I'm good. Good. I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. I'm doing well. I'm ready for the end of the semester. I don't know about you all. Okay, so what I want to do today, I started the recording. Um, I just want to do a review for your exam number four. Okay, and then I actually want to talk about exam number four because I don't know how fast anybody been paying attention to the forecast that we're supposed to get in the next day or two. A lot of snow, lots and lots of snow, um, which isn't a big deal. Like normally, you know, since we're remote, it's like not a big deal. Um, but I'll talk about that in a second. So first off, how many people got the email and saw the uh, PowerPoint slide that I posted? Hopefully you did. I'm sorry it was delayed. If you hadn't, go under course content in the classroom and go down to week 15. And here's the PowerPoint I'm going to be using in class today, just so you don't have to copy the problem down, all right? Or you could have it to reference. And I'll also, I'll also post my um, PowerPoint slide after class today. Okay. So first off, I'm just going to rearrange them a little bit. Um, I've actually gone ahead and posted your exam number four. It's already posted. Um, so because of the um, uh, snowstorm. Okay, so I, Jen, the reason I did this is sometimes like I lose power during this, you know, when a snow storm hits pretty heavily, has that, you know, does that, does anyone else ever experience that? Yeah, sometimes, yep, 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 it stinks, yep, yep. So what I want to do is I don't want to get a situation where um, Thursday comes around and we have 16 inches of snow and people's powers are out and they're missing the exam. Like, I just, I just don't want to do that. Um, so here's, here's what's going on. If you go into the classroom, all right, you log into the classroom and under exams, if you click on the exams tab, your exam number four is posted there. Okay. It just opened up at one o'clock today. Um, and your exam is due Thursday by 3 p.m. Not 3.01 or 30 seconds after 3. It's due Thursday by 3 p.m. Um, I will still come to class on Thursday, all right? Um, if you want to wait until Thursday to take the exam or if you take the exam and have any questions about your grade, I will still be here on Thursday, okay? Yep, no problem. So I was going to do, uh, yep, just can, can you give me one second to get through my announcements? Is that okay? Okay, so I will still be here on Thursday should you have any questions, um, but I, because of the impending snow apocalypse, um, you should plan to complete the exam prior, okay, to the snowstorm, okay, uh, in case anybody loses power, right, just so you get it out of the way, all right. Uh, if you choose to wait and something happens, okay, that's a risk you took. I'm not going to deal with it, okay. You just like, it's open now. You have 48 hours. Snow's not supposed to come till tomorrow. Like, I feel like this is a pretty good deal. Okay, does that sound okay to everybody? Uh, so, Professor, I can st start the, the test today and finish whenever I finish. I have the whole 48 hours to do it. That is correct. But here's the thing. When you open the test, you should complete it in one sitting. Okay? So as soon as you open the test, you should just finish it. Okay, you don't have 48 hours to do it. You open the test and you complete the test. Does that make sense? Professor. Yes. I have questions. So I saw the video on your YouTube channel about the final. Okay, so that was for a different class. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, yes. Um, and also about the exam number four, is it posted on the Blackboard already? Yeah. Yeah, so on my YouTube channel, that reference was to a different statistics course. Um, but when you log oh. into the classroom, okay, I'm actually teaching three different sections of statistics. So, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, one remote, one hybrid, and one fully online. So they're all different. But you click here in the exams tab, and you can see exam number four. Okay, now I can see it because before I, I was not. Yeah, yep. it didn't open till one o'clock. Okay. 
So as soon as you complete exam number four and submit homework number seven, you're done with the course, okay? I will not submit final grades until next week. So school officially ends uh, the 21st, okay? Um, but you should have everything in by the 17th, okay? So you should have your homework submitted and your exam completed by 3 p.m. on the 17th. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to post everyone's grades to Blackboard. I'm going to say, you know, hey, just look over your grades. Let me know if you see any errors. And then I'll give you a 24-hour period on Friday to email me back. Or you can take the weekend to email me back, you know, if you notice any errors in your grade. Um, and then I'll submit final grades on Tuesday once the semester officially ends um, after the 21st. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, any, I'm going to go, I'll do the homework question in a second. Uh, the last exam is not dropped. It cannot be dropped. Okay. I'll drop your lowest exam from exams one to three, and then I'll drop you and then, and I'll drop your lowest homework grade. And then I'll determine your average that way, exactly as how it says in the syllabus. And so exam four isn't cumulative? It is not cumulative. I'm gonna go over everything that's on it in a second. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me just answer this quick homework question. So uh, somebody asked about question number two on the homework, this one right here. It is a uh, uh, Pablo. No, it is not calculated in your, in your current grade. I have to do that on my end. Blackboard Blackboard won't handle that. Yeah, but I'll post your letter grade for you ahead of time before I submit final grades, just so you can check over and see if there's any issues. Okay. I will say this. Okay, and I know this sounds harsh, but like, oh, yep. Give me one second. I know this sounds harsh for me to say, but like do not email me asking about extra credit or if you can make up assignments. I just, I won't even respond to your email. The answer is no. So just, just don't do it. Okay. The grades, grades are what they are. Okay. Um, all right. So who had the question about uh, the homework number two, who had a question about this? What was your question about it? like how to do it or where to begin. So I think what's hard about this one is I don't give you the raw, I don't give you the mean and standard deviation, right? I just give you the raw data. Is that what your question is or where it's confusing? Wait, are you gonna put all the numbers in your calculator? Yeah, that's what you have to do. So you have, oh, okay. Yeah, you yeah. go into your calculator and you press stat and you edit the list and you input the data in the calculator. And then when you go to do the test, what you'll do is you'll go stat, you'll scroll over to tests, and it's option number two, the t test. And you'll have, and you'll use this option right here for data. Okay. Professor, so when I told you like today, I put in um 15,000 for the first part. Yep, that's fine. That's what okay. you should that's what you should do. I've seen a negative um for step three, I see a negative one point one zero four. So I was like, is that possibly right? Like you could have a negative test uh statistic. Yeah. Okay, so for for step five now, because for like back to step two, because I got 0 0.05 for step two. Um, uh, I was confused at like, um, no, no, so sorry, step four. Step four, I had 0 0.85 and for step two, I got 0 0.05. So I was like, that, that's like more. Yeah, that's more, right? So the p-value is greater than the level of significance. Okay. So when the p-value is greater than the level of significance, you fail to reject the null. And then someone had a question on homework number three. I'm gonna do a problem just like homework number three on our test today or on our review. And then if at the end, 
I forgot who had a question about um, homework number three. I will. Um, uh, there's a question on question number two. Um, when I did all, when I put everything in, into my calculator uh, for the T number, I got a negative 1.104. Okay. T value was 0 0.293. Did I calculate that correctly, or am I making a mistake? Because I'm not really sure. All right, let 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 me just put the data in. Sorry, <laughs> it's fine. It's okay. You can come in. Uh, it's right here. There you go. Yeah, you're okay. Fourteen hundred. Let me let me just put this stuff in. Oh my God, whoever made this problem is the worst. That was a joke because it was me. All right, so you plug the data in like this, okay? And then when you go stat, you go over to test, t-test. And was this a two-tailed test? Yeah, it was a two-tailed test because we're checking to see if it differs. So this is what you should get. If you don't see this on your screen, it's most likely because you just plugged something in wrong. All right, did anybody else get that when they did this? Uh, professor, I got that, but uh, did we need to write the X bar and the... You don't. Okay. You don't. Okay, so you don't have to click on the greater than thing? You think that's why? No, no. So it's a two-tailed test, right? So like, I had to make sure that this two-tailed was selected here. Oh my gosh, so I got that one different. So Yeah, that's... So if you don't have the correct test selected, you will get the incorrect p-value. Okay, so one point. Okay, I did. I got. Yeah, they got one point negative one point one zero four, and the step four part I got zero. If, if you look on the screen, it's this is what you should see. P value zero point two nine three. Okay. Got it. And then you guys can, and then you can all work from it from there. Okay. All right. So make sure you have the homework completed. Um, by the by the start of next class like just get it submitted okay uh let me just let me just are there Perfect. any uh, wasn't ahead. the homework due today uh no it was due thursday the 17th oh okay professor one question sure so if we do the homework, like let's say if I have some um if I do question number one and I just wanted to check with you before submit is that fine? Just email you. Yeah, what about you email me. So I check my work email a lot during the day. Um, okay. So I, you know, you, you, yeah, if you email me on, I, you'll get it. If you email me tomorrow, you'll get a response by tomorrow night. Okay. All right. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Also remember you get, everyone gets a dropped homework. So if you've done all the other six homeworks, you can actually just not do homework number seven. If it's really stressing you out. So is the so exams um are like more than the homework, right? Exams count more. So it's in the syllabus. So let's 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 take a look. Right. So your assignments total fifty percent of your grade. Your homeworks are fifty percent of your grade, and your exams are fifty percent of your grade. So they're same. Like it the works same. same as exam. Yeah. Okay. All right, let me just talk about the uh, exam for a second, okay? So I encourage everybody to take the exam. Before, uh, Professor, I submitted my homework, but I made an error on question two. Can you? Yeah, sure. So the homework should, uh, I'm just gonna allow a second submission for the homework so you can just resubmit. Someone just sent me a question privately.
Okay, so you can just resubmit your homework and I'll grade your second one. Is that okay? I don't want to say your name because you sent it privately. But I assume so. Okay, good. All right. So your exam's a little different, okay, uh, than the homework. So I'm just gonna load up the exam and 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 show you how you're gonna answer the problems, okay? So your exam is going to cover two type two top two types of topics. Okay, it's going to cover confidence intervals and it's going to cover hypothesis testing. Okay, so like question one and two, you'll notice it says um, construct a confidence interval. Right, look, pay very close attention to if it's asking you for the lower bound or the upper bound of the confidence interval, and and pay attention to round to three decimal places. Round to three decimal places. Okay, pay attention to that. So you're going to have questions one and two are, are the same confidence interval, but lower bound, upper bound. Question three or four are confidence intervals, lower bound, upper bound. Question five and six are confidence intervals, lower bound, upper bound. Then questions seven, eight, and nine are hypothesis testing questions. And you're going to notice, um, I'm not going to have every single five steps for it. The first question of it is just going to say, what is the correct hypothesis test? Just select the correct one. The second part of it will say, put your p-value in and round to three decimal places. And then question nine will say, make a selection and you'll have to select the right one. And then question 10 will be the same thing. Okay, select the correct hypothesis test. What is your p-value? And then what is your conclusion? Okay, so it's just 12 questions. Does anybody have any questions about how you submit this? Does that seem pretty self-explanatory? So we get an hour to do it? Or you have actually unlimited time to do it, but you just, as soon as you start it, okay, you, you, should, you should complete it, okay? I know it says the test can be saved and restarted later, but I'm gonna change that, okay? So as soon as you just get one attempt at it. Okay, does everyone understand? Any, any last minute questions on that? I know it's stressful. It's the end of the semester. If you would rather wait till Thursday to do it, I, I will be here on Thursday. I'm just trying to cover the case where, um, I, I think you got this. Cover the case where you might lose power because we're getting a huge snowstorm. Okay, and I just don't want a flurry of emails on Thursday saying I lost my power. What do I do? Okay, so it's up there. You know, I would highly encourage you as soon as I'm done actually with um, the review, maybe spending a couple minutes looking over your homework and then and then jumping right into it while everything's still fresh in your mind, honestly. Yeah, no problem. It's just been a tough semester. So, so Torah, that's, that's not necessarily correct. So you actually have as much time as you want on it. So you could start the test and take five hours on it. Okay. Um, but you just, once you start the test, you need to finish it. Okay. And you have to have your test completed by 3 PM on Thursday. Okay. All right. So what I want to do now is I actually want to do a review and I want to do one problem that corresponds to every single type of question you're going to have on the exam. Okay. So if you go to go to pay attention to this review, you'll be really well set for the exam. Okay. Professor, can you do not go too fast, please? Yeah, I'm not gonna go fast. Do I do I generally go fast? I generally go fast. But I will go I will go slow today. Okay. 
We're going to skip the break as well. We're just going to work right through till we get this done. And then I'll stick around if we finish early, which we will. I'll, I'll answer any questions anybody has, okay? All right, are you ready for your review? All right, and I won't forget, I will post the recording for this class uh, right after class, okay? So, so that it'll be posted to YouTube for you and ready to go. All right. Okay, so here are the topics on the exam, okay? Uh, and I will ref tell you what questions they reference on the exam. So confidence intervals, there were three types of confidence intervals. One for a mean when sigma was known, this is questions one and two on the exam. Confidence interval for a mean sigma unknown. This is questions three and four on the exam. Confidence interval for a proportion. These are questions uh, five and six on the exam. Let me just confirm this. Yep. Then we have hypothesis testing for a mean when sigma was known. I covered this in class and this is on your homework, but it's not on the exam. And then we have a hypothesis test for a mean sigma unknown. This is question seven, eight, and nine on your exam. And then there's gonna be a hypothesis test for a proportion. This is questions 10, 11, and 12 on the exam. Okay, so you'll know right here, you know, like when you're on a specific problem, you, you know, if you're like, oh, question five, what type of problem is it? Okay, well, it's a confidence interval for a proportion. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one example of this, one example of this, one example of this, one example of this, and one example of this, and then you'll be all set for your exam. Is everybody okay if I move on? Wait, I will wait, no problem. You are the bomb for doing that. <laughs> okay, you're, you're welcome. I haven't heard that in a while. But I appreciate that. I'll take that as a compliment. Dileski, just let me know when I can go on. Okay. Thanks. All right. So first one I want to do is confidence interval for a mean um, when sigma is known. All right. So this relates to questions one and two on your final or on your exam number four. All right. So it just goes like this. Suppose a researcher wants to estimate the mean time adults spend on their smartphones each day. Okay, so you have this researcher and they just wanna estimate on average how much time people spend on their smartphones every day. So the researcher samples, so look, I'm just gonna write down what you're given, okay? The researcher samples 50 adults and finds that the mean time that adults spend on their smartphones to be 250 minutes. So that's the X bar, okay? Next, it says, it literally says something like, assume the population standard deviation for time spent on a smartphone daily is 125 minutes, okay? Next, it says, now, let me give you a tip, okay? Pay really close attention on the exam to what level of confidence I ask, okay? All right, because your calculator defaults to 95. So this one here, it says construct a 90% confidence interval. Okay, so I want to construct a 90% confidence interval. I'm going to put 90% CI. All right, the good news is every single problem on this exam, you're just going to use your calculator. Okay, you're just going to use your calculator. So everybody, um, it, I think it's worth it to just um, uh, to take out your calculator and follow along with me as I do this, okay? 
You don't even have to interpret on the exam. Nope. Okay, I just want the numbers. Okay, I can rewrite it if you want. Do you want me to ask you to interpret it? <laughs> I'm not, no. Look, it's just a weird semester. I'm gonna be honest with you, and I'm hesitant to even say this on the recording, okay? But this is like the easiest exam I've ever given, okay? So if you just pay attention to what I'm doing here, I'm walking you through everything. There's, there's no reason you shouldn't like knock this exam out of the ballpark, okay? So I'm gonna press the stat button. I'm gonna scroll over to tests, okay? And does anybody know what option I want for this type of problem? <laughs> Liliana is giving me a hard time. Okay, Pamela has it right there. Yep. So for this type of problem, we want option number seven. So the Z interval. Okay, so I'm going to go back. I'm, I'm literally going to put this down here. You press the stat button. You go over to tests. And then it was option number seven. Z interval. Leonardo, did you come to class late? Uh, yeah, I did. I'm sorry. I was running an errand real quick uh, for my brother. Yep. So what you should do is uh, just watch the recording. Yes, it's up there. I'm not going to explain it again. Okay. I'm going to post a recording for the class. You can watch the first 10 minutes to get the lowdown. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm going to go over to stats. And what I have to do is I have to put these values in. Okay. So sigma right here. This was 125 minutes for the problem. X bar is 250 minutes that people spend on their smartphone. And N is the sample size, 50. Okay. Now here's where some people are going to uh, make a little bit of a mistake. What do I have to change this confidence level to? Yep. You got to be careful. You have to change it to, to, to 0 0.90. It'll just mark it as 0.9 for you. But then you hit calculate. And you should see something like this. Okay. So the lower bound is 220.92. And the upper bound is 279.08. Okay, so this is the lower bound that you would put in on the exam. And this is the upper bound. Okay, you don't have to interpret it on there. Um, it'll say something like round to three decimal places. Like, I'm pretty sure though the problem actually, the calculator goes out to three decimal places for you. I've also built in a tolerance in case you, in case you round the last digit incorrectly. Um, but that's the first question number one and number two on the final. So you're gonna put in the numbers, you're gonna put the first number in, then a comma, then- Nope, nope, nope. So on the exam, let me show you, just so we're clear. On the exam, question one, what you would do is you would put in the value of the lower bound, which would be 220.92. And then in question two, you'd put the upper bound, which would be this. Oh, I get it. Okay. I mean, they're different numbers because there's different problems, but. Okay. Okay. Professor, can you, can you please do, uh, do it again? Because I didn't get that value. So what you did was you probably put in different wrong, incorrect values. So press the stat button, go over to tests. And did you do number seven? Yeah. Okay. Did you put in 125? Hello? Um, yeah, I did put 125, did but put, I, no, I didn't put 50. Oh, so, so, so there you go. So you just have to be very meticulous about what you put in, okay? Because these questions are all or nothing. 
So if you if you put it if you if you've made a little error like this, you're going to get the wrong value. You're going to get the question wrong. I don't know what's wrong with my calculator now because uh, I don't get that at all. Do now you, I get. Um, hold on. Do you have do you have one twenty five two fifty fifty and then do you have this change to point nine? No, when I go to uh, the Z interval and then I put the, I click number seven, it throws me to the uh, completely different screen. You sure you're pressing this? It says Z interval. Yeah. Are you pressing, are you going over to, thank you, Pamela. Are you going over to stats here? No, I wasn't going there. Okay, so that's your problem. You were under data, so you got to click stats. Thank you, Pamela. I appreciate the help there. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then after you do that and plug this in, you should see this. All right, so that's questions one and two on your uh, exam. Is everybody okay if I go to the next one? Dun, 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 dun. All right, so this is when sigma is unknown. Oh, okay, so I'll go back, sorry. Let me know when I can go on Liliana. All right, so this is a confidence interval for a mean sigma unknown. This is, these, this is questions number three and number four on the exam. Okay. So it goes like this, a researcher wants to determine the mean, so the average amount of time students spend studying each week. Okay, so the researcher samples 100 students Okay, so you're given n is equal to 100 and finds that they study an average of 300 minutes. So that's your X bar each week with a standard deviation of 75 minutes. So this is, you're given the sample standard deviation. All right, and then it says construct a 95% confidence interval. So the good news is, is, again, you're going to use your calculator for this, okay? So I'm going to press stat. I'm going to go over to tests. And for this one, does anybody know what option it is for this? It's not, nope. It's not two. two, one and two are for hypothesis testing. Pamela has it there. You want option number eight because you want a T interval. So it's option number eight. Professor, just a question for the standard deviation. Don't you use the Sigma uh, sign? No, so only when you notice the subtle difference here when I say assume the population standard deviation. So population standard deviation gets the Sigma. This is just a sample standard deviation. That's why it gets the S. That's also why in our calculator, we use a different option. So it was stat, tests, and it was this, this time it's option number eight for T interval. Okay. How do you, how do you tell the difference between the population and the sample? Yep, so it'll always say something li literally like, assume the population standard deviation. Sorry that it's real bad box there, okay? Like on your exam, assume the population standard deviation. Do you see it there? Yeah. That's when you know it's sigma, okay? When it's not, like on your exam, it says with a sample standard deviation here, okay? That's the subtle difference. 
So that's how you'll know. So questions one and two are basically Z intervals and three and four T, right? That is correct. Yep. Yep. So go into your calculator. You're just going to go down to option number eight. And again, you're going to have the stats because I'm not giving you the data. Okay, so make sure you have stats selected here. And then you just have to input these values for this problem. So the average time that students spent studying per week was 300 minutes. The standard deviation, look here, S, that's why I have S, is 75. This sample was 100 students. And what level of confidence did I ask for? 95. So just make sure to change this to 0.95, yep. And then you go to calculate. And how many people see this on their screen or on their calculator? Okay, so there you go. So the lower bound is 285.12. And the upper bound is 314.80. Okay, so lower. And then this is your upper bound. Okay. So questions one and two, you're gonna use the Z interval. Questions three and four, you're gonna use the T interval. Okay. All good? Everybody okay if I move on? Does anybody need me to wait? Okay, good, 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 good. All right, so then this next one is confidence intervals for proportion. This is questions uh, five and six on your exam. All right, so it goes like this. Gallup, Gallup organization conducted a poll of 800 adults. So you're given this. You're given the sample size is 800. And asked, do you think the iPhone is better than Android phones? Okay, the answer is obviously yes. Okay, there's no competition here. Okay, the Android phones are just basically terrible phones. Okay, I know we all agree on that. But for some reason, not all 800 adults said yes, which was shocking to me. So 500 rep respondents said yes. Okay, so that's the X. That's the number of people who said, sure, yeah, okay. So let's construct a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of adults who think the iPhone is better than Android phones. I don't trust the people who said no either, okay? Android phones are terrible. I used to have one. I will never own another one again. Okay, so for this one here, when you go to your calculator, I'm gonna press the stat button. I'm gonna scroll over to tests. And does anybody remember what this, uh, so the, the test is for hypothesis tests. Yeah, Pamela has it. You gotta scroll down a little bit further and you gotta find this thing called one dash prop Z int. Okay, it's option A, so one dash prop Z int. So again, use calculator. So we did the stat button. We scroll over to tests and it was option A, one dash prop Z interval, okay. And this one's super easy, okay? 95% confidence interval. So under one dash prop Z in, I'm just gonna hit enter. I'm gonna put the 500 people who said the apple is better. The sample size is 800. 
the confidence interval is Uh, you're welcome. Yeah, I don't. I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to fail anybody. I'm not out to do that. Okay, this is like, you know, remote teaching. It's this is this is hard. You know. Um, so then you're going to go to calculate here. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll just let me get to this problem, and then I'll, I'm also going to give some uh, give, give a few more tips. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Marcos has it. Marcos is like, okay, all right, let's move on. <laughs> How many people have this on here on their screen? Okay, good. All right, so look, you have to pay attention to this, okay? It's going to say round to three decimal places. So it's 0 0.591 for the lower bound. And the upper bound is 0 0.659 when I round it, 0.659. So this is my lower bound and this is my upper bound, okay? Now look, if you make an error rounding, I will accept it, okay? I built, I built in a little bit of a tolerance on the on the exam, so it'll accept things like 0 0.590, okay, or 0 0.658. Like, so don't round correctly, but realize that there's a there's a tolerance built in. Okay. So some of the things that were posted in there, um, like I would like print that. I'm going to post this sheet, this, this this PowerPoint slide to the Blackboard. And I would print it out and have it handy when you take the exam. So like, okay, questions five and six, what are the options in the calculator? Stat, test, one dash, prop, z, int, okay? All right. Everybody feel like they could handle at least questions one through six? Okay, I hope so. Yeah, yeah, yes, you don't have to thank me. It's okay. All right, it's no big deal. I, are, are your professors being hard on you guys or something? I don't understand. This, that's, that's not cool. Hold on, let me just see. For questions five and six, it would ask us for the lower. Yes, so hold on. Um, so look, questions five and six. What is the lower bound? So you would put the lower bound in here. And then question six, what is the upper bound? You would put it in here, okay? I, someone asked that question. I believe it was Daniela. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, I, you know, I'm not gonna comment on a recording on what, you know, but you guys, uh, I, I don't know if I should be your favorite professor, but let's be honest, I'm probably your easiest professor, which is, you know, that's okay. All right. So at least, at least hopefully that this will alleviate your stress a little bit, okay? All right. Is everyone okay if I go on to the next two questions? <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. I appreciate that. But <laughs> I'll rate my professor. Oh man. Okay. All right. So hypothesis testing for a mean. Uh this is sigma unknown. So this goes to questions um seven, eight, and nine on your exam, okay? So the questions on your exam, it's not gonna ask you to write out each five steps, okay? So I'm gonna go through what it's, what it's gonna ask you, okay? So that you'll see, okay. Okay. <sighs> 
<laughs> yeah, for the jokes. I actually tell a lot more jokes when I'm in person, but uh, did I ever tell you guys what my favorite rate my professor comment is? Uh, yeah, my, my favorite rate my professor comment, somebody posted, um, you know, good class, tells a lot of jokes during class, dot, 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 not always funny. So <laughs> I, I, I laugh at that one. That's my favorite one because it's because it's absolutely true. Okay. No, my jokes are pretty terrible. I'm sorry. I am a dad after all. So, you know, dad jokes. Okay. Appreciate that. Um, okay, so let's just go through this next one here. All right, so this is question seven, eight, nine on your final. They're on exam number four. So according to the Department of Health, adults spend 120 minutes on average working out per week. Okay, so, you know, running, whatever, you know, my wife and I, we have a Peloton. Okay, you know, my wife definitely spends more than 120 minutes on it. I'm lucky if I get in 15, but so this is like the average of everybody, okay? Um, a researcher is interested in seeing if college students, okay, spend more time working out per week on average. So college students, okay. Uh, what's the key word in that sentence there that tells what type of test this is? Okay. All right. And so the key word is more. So what type of test is this? Yeah, it's a right tail test. It's a greater than. All right, so the researcher samples 31 college students. So this is what you're given. Okay, just so we're clear, you're given, the researcher samples 31 college students and finds that they spend uh, 135 minutes per week on average. So their X bar of those 31 students is 135 with the standard deviation of 65 minutes. So that's S not Sigma, okay. So test the researcher's hypothesis at the zero researchers hypothesis at the 0 0.05 level of significance. Okay. Um, so the, the exam, let me go, let me load up the exam, but the exam is gonna ask you to do, okay. Is the exam is gonna ask you to select the correct hypothesis statement? Okay, all right, so it's not gonna ask you like to find the parameter, but it, but it is good to know exactly what we're talking about here, okay? So just what average are we investigating? Just, just, for, our, just for ourselves, because it actually helps to understand the problem too. We're investigating the mean time that who does what? And we're not gonna put a number to it yet. All right, call it in the meantime, working out by who? Some Pamela has it there, by college students. So the mean time per week. That college students spend working out. Okay, so now you guys were right, everyone in the chat, it's a right tailed test. Okay, so this is the first question you're gonna have to ask, okay? So it's mu is equal to something versus mu is greater than something. Okay, so what are we looking to show evidence that their average is greater than what number? Yeah, we wanna say, look, your college students, you spend more than, more than two hours a week on average working out. So we'll start with the null hypothesis that it's equal to 120. So what you'll have to do on the exam is look, there's going to be a bunch of different options here. You have to select the right one. Okay. That's what it comes down to. Okay. So just, just be, you know, make sure you're like, oh, it's a right tailed test, but notice like there's two different right tailed tests. So you have, I'm going to try to trick you. So you have to be very diligent there. Okay. All right, so then I give you the level of significance. Okay, that's step two, but I'm not gonna ask you that. Okay, 
Step three is the test statistic. I'm not even gonna ask you that, okay? I just, the next question is gonna say, what is the p-value? And then round to three decimal places, okay? So let's grab our calculator for this. So I'm gonna go over to stat. I'm gonna scroll over to test. Does anybody know what, uh, what option this is for this week, for this problem? Yeah, okay, thanks in the chat. It's option number two, so it's a T test, okay? So I'm even gonna put that in the, in the slides for you here, okay? So we press the stat button. You scroll over to tests and it's option number two, t-test, okay? So look, for this problem here, I give you the stats, okay? But listen, on your exam, it's a lot like question number two of your homework. You're gonna have to input the data yourself, okay? This is the one question that's a little bit different than what I'm gonna do here. So I don't just wanna give it away, okay? But for this problem that I have here, I give you the summary statistics. So you're gonna click stats. Mu sub zero, that's what you have in the null hypothesis. So that's 120. X bar is 135. S of X was 65 minutes, the standard deviation. And this researcher sampled 31 college students, okay? And then you just have to go down and make sure that you select the test that matches the alternative, which is a greater than sign right here. And then I'm gonna scroll down to calculate. How many people see this on their screen or on their calculator? Okay, good, good, good. So all I'm gonna ask is the p-value, okay? And it's gonna round to three decimal places. So look, here's the p-value. P is equal to 0 0.104, okay? P is equal to 0 0.104. Okay, so you're gonna put that p-value in here. And next it's gonna say, what do you do? Okay, what do you do? So are we rejecting or failing to reject the null here? And why? Okay, we fail to reject. Why do we fail to reject? Yet the p-value is greater than the level of significance. So we fail to reject the null. This is because the p-value is greater than the level of significance. So look, you just have to go on the exam and if you think that's the option, so fail to reject, all right, because the p-value is greater than the level of significance. So you would select this one right here. Okay, make sense? I'm not saying that's the answer for this problem. I'm just saying if you think that's the answer, that's what you would select. All right, you think you'd be okay on this one? This is the hardest, I mean, these are the hardest problems, the hypothesis testing, I get it. All right, is everybody ready to see me do the last one? Oh, 
hold on, let me see the question. And just to be clear, we always fail to reject because the p-value is yes, yes. And you, and you would reject, sorry about that. And you would reject if the p-value was less than the level of significance, always. Just pay attention to the wording on the exam for the multiple choice because I try to trick you with some of it, okay? So just, just, be, just be mindful of it. Yeah, there's a trick in there. Just, just read it very carefully. Read it very carefully. Uh, professor, like on this example for the test, uh, you said we have to, you give us the data, right? Yes. So we have to put it separate before, like that would be the first thing to do. You plug it into the calculator, yes. That is where you go to a stat, edit, and then you put that data, right? That is correct, yep. That is correct. I also did a problem just like that. Um, if you go back and look at the recordings, uh, it was about some drug. I don't know if people remember that increased the amount of sleep that people got. I don't know if that rang a bell, but there's a video recording on how to do it, okay? And yes, uh, this next question, I'm, the last question I'm about to do this one is just like question three on the homework, yes, okay? Pablo, so you, once you see me do the next question, you'll be able to do question number three on the homework pretty straightforward. You're welcome. Everybody okay if I go on? All right, last question. Speak now, forever hold your peace. Trying to remember if they even asked that at my wedding. I don't think so. All right. Uh, I'm sure everybody would have spoke up and been like, Ashley, what are you doing? You could do so much better, but I'm glad they didn't ask. Okay. All right, here's the last problem. According to the Department of Education, 45% uh, of college students enjoy taking statistics. Um, what do you think of that? Sounds about right, wrong, too low, too high. It should, yeah, it should be way higher, obviously. You don't need to suck up to me. The, the exam's already done, okay? But I appreciate it. Um, I also totally did not just make up that statistic up off the top of my head. Totally, totally, that's a real thing. Actually, that's a lie. I did just make that up. Okay, but anyways. So a certain professor at WCC, okay, uh, believes the proportion of college students at WCC who enjoy taking statistics is different than this percentage. Okay, so what's the keyword in there that tells me what type of test this is? Okay, yeah, yeah, different. And uh, what type of test does that imply it's gonna be? Yep, it's gonna be a two-tailed test. So to test his, his claim, okay, so this is what you're given, okay. Okay, he samples, you're given the sample size, 400 students at WCC, and he finds that 205 of them enjoy taking statistics. Great. At the 0 0.05 level of significance, is there evidence to support the professor's claim? So you're given alpha, okay. All right, so all you have to do, uh, let's first set up the test. Um, so just so we're clear, what, what proportion am I investigating here? The proportion of what, who enjoy what?
No, no, no. So if it says less, it would be a left tail test. Notice how it just says that it's different. Okay. So two tail tests would be things like if it's changed. Yes, deleski has got it. Okay. It's specifically WCC students. It's the proportion of WCC students who enjoy taking statistics. And I'm sorry, I should have started this. This is problem number question, uh, number uh, 10, number 11, and number 12 on your final, on your exam number four. Okay, so we said it was a next, it was a two-tailed test. So it's P is equal to something and we're saying, wait a second, no way, uh, I think it's different. So it's not equal to that number. So what are we looking to show evidence that it's not equal to, what, what number? Yep, right here. So the professor is claiming, no way, it's not equal to that number. So we'll start with the assumption that it is equal to that number, okay? So what you'll see on the exam is you'll have to select the right one, okay? So the data is provided there, you have to figure out what it is correctly, okay? All right, step two is given, all right, alpha. I don't ask you for the test statistic. All I ask you for next is on question 11 is what is the p-value? So again, you're gonna use your trusty calculator for this, okay? You're gonna press the stat button. You're gonna scroll over to test. And does anybody know what which one this is? Yep, Pamela has it. Yep, Dolesky has it. Yep, it's option number five. It's always one dash prop Z int, okay? I'll do it over here. So you went stat button on your calculator. You scroll over to tests. And then it was option number five. One dash prop Z int. Or one dash prop Z test, sorry. One dash prop Z test, sorry, sorry. One dash prop Z test. And so P sub zero is whatever you had in the null. So here it's 0.45. X was the 400 WCC students, 205 here said, yeah, yeah, I enjoyed taking statistics. And then you just have to make sure that you get the P value or the, the alternative correct here. Okay, so it's not equal to. So I can't stress this enough. If you select the wrong test, you're gonna get the wrong p-value, okay? That's why it's like incredibly important. Uh, other way around, what do you mean? I'm sorry. Did I misspeak or something? Yep, I did that on purpose to see who was paying attention. Well done. Yep, yep, good job. Good job, totally didn't make an error on the last problem of the the day. Yeah. Yep. Good catch. Good catch. So then you're just going to scroll down to calculate here. And then how many people see this? Okay. Anybody else see it? Okay. So this is your p-value where it says p. So it goes to three decimal places. So p is equal to 0 0.012 when I round it. Okay, 0 0.012. So do we reject or fail to reject here? What do we think? Okay, and why do we reject? You're, you're all right, why do we reject? The p-value is lower than what? Yep, 
right there. Boom, got it. So we reject the null. Because the p value is less than the level of significance. So again, you would just select that option on the test, okay? So we would reject the null here because the p-value is less than the level of significance. And I'm not saying that's the right answer here. I'm just saying, if you think that's what it is, that's what you would select. And then when you're all done, hit save and submit. And your final grade will on the exam will get released to you um, after the due date, okay? So partially I do that because like if people take it early, you know, I don't want you to get your results and then, you know, you could potentially share it with another student. So all the, all the answers and stuff will get released to you after the, the due date. All right, that's your final. What do you think? It's not too bad, trust me, it's not. Okay. So just so we're clear, for, for anybody who came in late, your exam is posted because there's a snowstorm coming and I don't, you know, some snowstorms lead to power outages, okay? Myself, it happens all the time. I live in a neighborhood where all the power lines are above, uh, not buried underground. So we lose power like all the time, okay? feel like I lose power at least once a week. Like when the wind blows, I lose power, okay? <clears throat> so um, as to help you prepare for that, your exam is posted, okay? You just have to make sure it's completed before next Thursday by three, all right? Make sure you have your homework turned in before class next week. So before 1 p.m. on Thursday. Uh, and uh, I will try to get your homework and everything graded by uh, by Thursday night. And then you'll get an email from me Friday saying all your grades are posted. Let me know if there's an error. And I will try to get your, your grade in the class posted as well. So does anybody have any questions for me? Um, any Professor, can you show me again the just, I just need to see the slide for the first um, exercise that you did. This one? Yes, thank you. I'm going to save this and post this to the class too. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I won't forget to post the recording today. I'll post uh, it. Pro Professor, I am still a little bit confused when to reject the null and when uh, not to. Okay, yep. So just so we're clear, you fail to reject. You see this p-value here? You compare the p-value to alpha right here. Okay, so just so we're clear, you reject when the p-value is less than alpha, okay? And you fail to reject. <laughs> And you fail to reject when the p-value is greater than alpha, okay? Always, always, that's just the rule. That's just the rule. Like notice here, this 0 0.10 is greater than 0 0.05, so we fail to reject. That's, that's always the rule. Are there any other questions? Okay. Um, so, um, anybody need to see any slides here for anything? <laughs> 